Hello friends, welcome back. Today we're going to uh, run functional tests on API endpoints using Chai HTTP. Okay, so as a reminder of this project, it's being on REPL.IT. I set up the REPL.IT project earlier. Um, if you want to see how we set it up in the first video, you should go check that one out. Um, <clears throat> we want to replace assert fail test in the stat with a text response. And so the last time that we ran our tests, we saw that, you know, these are the errors. And so once you run these tests, and once the cool thing about testing is once you um, start with testing, you can... <laughs> you know, the tests show you exactly which line of your thing is failing. So here we can say tests forward slash two underscore functional tests. This is our error message. This is our initial error message. This is the stack trace and it goes down to here. So we can see that it's on line 58 of functional tests. So that's actually this one forward slash tests forward tests forward slash two. So here we're on tests forward slash one. So we're actually complete with this whole file. So now we can just open up tests two in which we look at functional tests. And so, yeah, uh, so here, let's just go through this code. Chai, um, this is the uh, frame, JavaScript framework. So this is like a library and we're setting that variable, the variable of chai equal to that library. And so assert is equal to chai.assert. I'm not exactly sure how that works. Uh, server, so we're importing the express app, meaning that we're actually bringing in all the code for our tests or for uh, of our application that we're testing. And so we wanna call that server. Uh, chai HTTP, this is the HTTP plugin. Um, and then here there, we're just saying uh, Chai, which is the application. And we're saying we're connecting Chai HTTP to Chai. And now here we've got a suite of functional tests. So Mocha allows testing asynchronous operations. There is a small, uh, big difference. Can you spot it? So test, asynchronous test, um, hashtag example. And then it's got a callback function of here where we do set timeout assert is okay async test done so pass a call back to the test function so this is our test function and this is just a example uh, string and then we're passing in a callback function that asserts if it's it's okay so it's going to do assert is okay async test done call done when the async operation is complete so once this is once the timeout has processed, then done happens, and the function will be executed after 500 milliseconds. So the tests have this happens half a second after. Um, oh, this runs half a second after um, this actual um, thing runs. So I hope that makes sense. Um, that's in previous lessons as, uh, as well in the basic JavaScript stuff. Um, the tests have example in their description string. Uh, are instructional examples that are not parsed by your test analyzer. They're instructional examples. So this is just a string that just kind of tells you what it's doing. Um, so sweet, integration tests with Chai HTTP. Okay, so here's the suite, uh, and then here we have a function, and let's see how far this function goes. It looks like it goes all the way to the bottom. Um, nope, it doesn't, let's see. Okay, it goes to here. Perhaps. So I'm just looking up to see where it starts. Okay, yeah, I passed it. Oh no, this is it. Okay, so so this is an asynchronous asynchronous test example, and it looks like sweet. This okay, this one's test, and this says sweet, so that's different. Um, we know our line is on 58, so I'm just reading through this so we get an idea for how this all works. Okay, but if you wanted to jump straight into this one, you could just scroll down to line 58. I'm not going to do that right now because what I want to do is read the code so I understand what's going on here. Um, so, yeah, here we have our test um, one, and now we have another suite within our initial functional test suite. So this is integration tests with Chai HTTP. And we can test our API endpoints using a plugin called Chai HTTP. Let's see how it works. And remember, API calls are asynchronous, meaning that um, they don't have to happen immediately. Like they don't have to happen one after another. So here we have a suite, um, get hello name is equal to name in parentheses and name. And so function, uh, we, sp we send a test string in the URL query string. Okay, so here, we're just doing our test, and our test is going to start a asynchronous, um, um, you know, block of code. And then we have our function here, which is our callback function. So this is, this is all in that function, and that, which is part of this test one. 
Um, server is an express app. So chai.request server, chai.get. Okay, so now they're chaining them together. So we're getting the request uh, from the server. Chai was the library we set up. Server is our app um, that we saved as the variable server. And then we say get, and we're making a get request here. So we're um, HTTP underscore method URL. And then we're our, on the end, where you're passing in a callback function. We send the request and pass a callback in. Node style res is the response object. So this is just node style. Um, res.status contains the status. Okay. So res.status contains the status code. So that will tell us if it's 200, it's a success. So assert equal is equal to res.status 200. Response status should be 200. Uh, res assert dot equal res dot text is equal to hello John response should be that and then we're done okay cool so I think they're just providing us an example here again our failing test is on line number fifty eight so now we're getting into it oh that's what they're saying ready to have a try replace assert dot fail to make the test pass if no name is passed the endpoint response with hello guest so here we're saying uh, get uh, test to the git forward slash hello with no name so yeah, if I come over to here, um, I think the API is like, oh, well, like, let's start it on a new window. I just want to see if this actually works. If we go, hello, is that going to be an API thing? Okay, cool. So it's giving us, uh, this is, I think it's JSON or whatever. It's just a, a, a quick little uh, API type request. And so we want this test to pass because it's functionally working over here. And so how are we going to do that? Um, Res.status, hello guests, done. Okay, yes, yeah, so here we have our chai. So assert.fail and assert.fail. Well, assert res.status um, is 200. I mean, assert equal, right? And then um, res.text, hello guests. So we want to say assert equal, right? Test, status, and text response. See example above. Please follow the order dash 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 text. We rely on that in our tests. It should respond, hello, guests. Okay, so I'm actually seeing a typo there, right? It should be here. It should be, well, it's lowercase, hello, guest. So I actually think that this is a typo on free code camp start. So anyways, I think that I've got that one. Um, so that's um, number 58. I've changed the equal to, we want it to equal 200. So I think that that's gonna work. So now let's stop the server and restart it and then that'll tell us and then when you restart sometimes it doesn't scroll down for you so make sure you scroll down um, and so yeah I'm just gonna scroll back up it looks like uh, we've got a functional test passing test get with, with your name okay and so if we scroll down here we see that the test that's failing is number 73 and so that's down here and so my guess is that that means we've passed our first uh, portion of this one. So let's copy this URL and bring it over to free code camp and print it into here You say I've completed the test cool. So that's what we're doing and then um, as with like the last one We're just gonna keep going down and solving these tests So as you this is this is why testing actually starts making sense You know if you start your application and then a year later you make some change where you you're not thinking about this Hello API thing and you want to make sure it's right then um yeah, you don't want to, uh, th these are going to be like little robots that go into your application and just test all the functionality to make sure it's working correctly. So if you make a change to an application a year down the line and it's, it tends, it, it breaks this hello or API request and, or maybe that's like serving back like the number of likes on a page or whatever it is. Um, this, the tests will tell you, Hey, you, you shouldn't merge this code because it's breaking something. And that's, that's why the tests are super useful. So this, it seemed, I, I can remember when I started with this, that it seemed crazy that you would put so much work into just writing tests to make sure your application works, but it's actually uh, super useful. So functional tests are good. Uh, anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this one and we'll see you in the next lesson.